So yesterday morning we left off with a question from Kultru about um, the idea that if Balaram is the fullest manifestation of Sakyarasa, but he's not involved as the Priyanarmas like Mother Mongol are, how can we address him as such? Um, and I answered it brief, but I think that the question itself uh, is based on a mistaken preference and a misunderstanding of what I said. So, to clarify for everyone, um, the point I was making is that Bridge is that place in which the fullest manifestation of Sakya, <coughs> of Sakya Rasa, can be found compared to uh, the fact that it can be found also in Mathura, in Dwarka, but it's also there in, in Lakshmi, in relation to Ram, and so forth. So in some other places, partial manifestations of Sakyarati can be found. Um, the full face of it is found in Braj, in Balaram is, whose appearance we are talking about is, in, in a sense, the birth of, of, um, of Sakyarasa, he takes birth or appears in, um, in Braj. Now, of course, none of these things are bound by time, by beginnings or ends, um, but when Krishna, Swayam Bhagavan, full of emotions as he is, as we all are, our mode of life is our life, he experiences the emotion of friendship, then that is Balaram. He manifests, if you will, not because it's not something that happens in time. Um, and so we'll go on about this and um, bring hopefully some more clarity to the, to the question that, uh, that you asked. Um, so with, with Balaram, it, Krishna's emotion of friendship is, is born, so to speak. So that means, boy, uh, one thing that means to us is that Krishna and Balaram are one. Mm -hmm. They're the same. They're the same, but they're also different. And from Lagu Bhagavatamrita is a work of Rupa Goswami, a um, work in which he makes the point that Krishna is the fountainhead of all uh, manifestations of divinity. Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam is the Paribhat Sutra or the, the password to understanding, unlocking the Tattva, the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, and most of you are well aware this is a very important point because, of course, Krishna mentions it in the Gita as well. And he says, Aham Sarvasya Prabhava Mata Sarvam Bhavartate. Iti Mat Bhavatam Temam Buddha Bhavasamam Vita Raga Bhavasamam Vita. If you want to give yourself entirely, which would be one side of Unconditional love. You have to give without expectation of return. Um, give only with the spirit of, of giving. No alternative or no uh, ulterior, excuse me, um, motives involved. But on the, the the other thing that you have to have is you have to have a center to which you can give that can actually receive. So if we give unconditionally to a center that's not qualified to receive, then the reality that giving is the gift is not going to be experienced in full measure. 
Because you gave, but it couldn't be taken. And, and you can feel that also. So the necessity, therefore, for a center. Uh, I've often given the example, and it's not mine, but uh, that of the stomach. Uh, maybe the Bhagavatam uh, invokes the, uh, the metaphor of the tree, similar idea. You want to nourish all, all the flowers and fruits and branches, you pour water on the root. You want to nourish the body, then all the parts of the body need to work to put food in the stomach, which has a unique capacity to transform that food in a way that the energy contained in it can be dispersed throughout the entirety of the body. So, so we need this, a center, and if we on the circumference, lost a microphone. Um, Better? Better. Should I continue? Or? Yeah. So if, if we on the circumference uh, are are uh, agents of giving that, that makes the circle of life, if you will, then again, the center has to be taken. So, thus we find in Gaudiya Vaishnavism uh, that Krishna is depicted and I would say experienced as well as the enjoyer. Hmm? Of course, in the context of his enjoying and receiving and taking, the, what is given is redistributed throughout the entirety of the, of the circumference hmm? because he is the actual, has the capacity to digest, right, that which is offered hmm? and, and thus return it in a way that uh, it otherwise could not be taken advantage of. So, an important point, and Krishna makes it in the Gita when he says that Knowing me, I'm the source of everything, everything comes from me. He wants to make it clear. And, and knowing this, it means knowing, knowing um, the center, then you have the capacity to give of yourself, to engage in bhajan, to give of yourself, like we find amongst the inhabitants of Vrindavan, um, fully, if you will, Pujya Patrita Marsh used to refer to it as um, non-calculative devotion, where devotion and worship becomes love, then the object of worship the wor and the worshiper and the worship that's the bridge between them is, is bridged, so to speak, and the object of love and the love become one. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, I believe, what Kavi Karnapur finds in his Leela uh, narrative, Ananda Vrindavan Champu, Radharani, making the statement, if you say I love you, then you don't understand love. If you say I love you, then you don't understand love. Because in love there's no I and there's no you. There's only we. I can add that. Because there's, there's, there's two that are one, and not in a way that cancels out the two, but makes each more than they are unto themselves. Mm -hmm. So those who say I love you, they know nothing about life. Mm -hmm. You can tell that to your wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, this is the idea in that in Braj, they don't know any difference between themselves and Krishna in a dynamic sense. In other words, they think that he's one of them.
in the rain. Um, brings a thought to mind. Uh, Prabhupada named the deities in London that he installed Radha London Ishwar. And um, later on, uh, another guy, I think, Bucking Dunton Ryan Marsh, found it a bit peculiar. Radha London Ishwar, uh, you know, who, who, who is Radha standing next to the ruler of, of, of London, right? Um, and he thought maybe maybe one of maybe he thought one of Prabhupada's students came up with that name. I could probably come up with it, but I uh, made the point that well, first of all, there's the broader idea by which you could thoughtfully reply and say. Uh, um, certainly, Krishna is the is is the master of everything and, and every place and so on and so forth. But besides that, um, the the very the the Swarup Lakshan primary characteristic of prema is a sense of what Rupa Goswami calls minus mine. That Krishna is mine. Not that I. I'm Krishna's, but Krishna's mine, a kind of possessiveness. Now, I pointed out before that the two-letter word my produces a one-letter word I. So what I think is mine, my, results in I. Um, so, this is materially speaking. So we, our sense of self is defined by our attachments, and our sense of ownership and so forth, which of course is false because we don't own anything, as time will tell. Mm -hmm. And so the I is not something that can be defended or that will endure. I are hardly by some would be so With the time, in this poetic sense, the rising and the setting of the sun, they were hardly. Everyone's sense of I is being taken away. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other side, bhakti, I described it the other day, um, evoking the word bhairagya, detachment, speaking about the universal uh, virtues of detachment or renunciation, and as much as they uh, it translates out into objectivity, for those of you who weren't there. Uh, the point I was making is that everyone really praises the virtues of renunciation in as much as renunciation is about objectivity. You follow me? Renunciation means to step back from something. If you're too close to it, you can't see it for what it is. And that close I'm talking about emotively. So if my emotions, by my emotions I'm too attached to someone, then I cannot sit on a jury and give an unbiased verdict. So lack of bias, prejudice, um, this is thought to be a virtue. This is thought to be um, how we arrive at what's true and what's real. Hmm? Whether it be in the legal uh, uh, realm, or the political realm, or the scientific realm, we found out the truth. We just follow the facts, right? Is the idea. So, this is the very thing that we do in spiritual life, also, which is so mis misunderstood to be the antithesis of that. Spiritual life is thought to be something lacking objectivity and. Uh, totally emotional and uh, if not imaginary and so on and so forth. The way in which these spiritual experiences um, uh, arise, the ground out of it, which they arise in serious practitioners is one in which they have unplugged um, to a large extent from attachments to things and thoughts about those things. That's what yoga is about. Hmm? So it's a very um, serious exercise in objectivity. It's not something you do just in the lab. 
You have to do it. It's a lifestyle. Right? A lifestyle of stepping back. Stepping back enough from the world to see it in an unbiased way for what it is. And then, of course, the beauty of Gaudiya Vaishnavism is that its vairagya is, is not so much of a detachment as it is a vairagya, a special kind of attachment. So it enables that stepping back, one step enables you to step two steps back into the world. Vishvam Purnam Sukhayate. What does he say? Kaivalyam Narakayate Kasha Pushpa. Vishvam Sakhari Thakur. The idea of Bhairagi in the ordinary sense, seeking. Sayuja Mukti, to give up everything, to have nothing, um, is not a kind. Koi William, not a kind. For the, from the devotee's perspective, that is a hellish idea to enter into near station, indeterminate Brahman. No friends, no movement, uh, no bhakti. And at the same time, worldly acquisition, that's like uh, trying to find uh, 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 like sand castles. Here's another analogy. He says flowers in the sky. Mm -hmm. It's imaginary. Material acquisition is an imaginary thing. We never acquire anything. We never even touch matter. But to speak of acquire, what we appear to acquire is, is, is not so only such an appearance. And, um, here today and, and gone tomorrow. Um, so our kind of more full sense of Bhairagya in the context of speaking of the virtues of detachment is one that arises out of a special kind of attachment by me, special, peculiar, rag, special kind of attachment, attachment to Krishna and in a particular way. And this reaches its uh, full measure in the residents of Braj, who feel that Krishna is mine, is ours. And so, maybe Prabhupada was thinking, let the London people think Krishna is ours. <laughs> that would be good. He's ours. He belongs to us. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who um, uh, took the, the the vision of Bhakti Muntakur to uh, this is the phrase I was looking for yesterday if you all follow the video and send it to me thankless task the preaching can be a thankless task mm -hmm. so he took up the thankless task of trying to interface with the modern world and share uh, Gaudi Vashti and of course we are all here to thank Bhakti you know. <laughs> thank you Bhakti you know. uh, but sometimes it can feel like that, uh, thankless. Mm. At any rate, the idea he had, um, the vision, it was uh, Bhakti Sam Sarsathakur gave some shape to that. In the context of giving shape to that, he acted in a way that was uh, non-traditional in some respects. One of the examples is that he, he um, somewhere, he used a toilet that was uh, British, a British toilet. You know, in India you can find the toilet is on the floor and then don't sit, but squat. Hmm? So, so, so the British apparently thought it was you know, very weird and uh, through their particular sensibilities and so forth. So, this is just one example of how Saraswati Thakur tried to uh, uh, be like them enough that they could, <laughs> you know, they could get beyond such things and hear what he actually had to say. So there's a famous letter from a lady, a British lady who wrote back uh, to friends. Apparently it was kept, I don't know where it is now, but it's a famous letter. 
and she was speaking about the fact that uh, you know India's got so many of these sadhu people and, and they're not worth listening to. But this one is different, she said. And he even uses an English word. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it worked. <laughs> um, so uh, let the British people think in this case, he's ours. He's ours. This is the spirit of Brudge. So this is a kind of dynamic, uh, I want to say, sense of, of oneness that they have in, in love. If they don't think the same way or the, the same measure, for example, in Vaikuntha. He's Bhagawan, and we're the servants of Bhagawan. He's there, and we're here, and we connect with him through the calculated uh, engagement in Bhakti. What's the calculation? He's God. He should be worshipped and worship. Hmm? It's not a bad thing. It's a good calculation. It's pretty good math. He's God. He should be worshipped. We're different. Hmm? This is Vaikuntha. But it's, 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 from the Godi perspective, it's worship. It's not praying in the full sense of the term. Rupa Goswami admits, yes, there's a Baba and there's a praying in Vaikuntha, but basically all the Sampradayas, all the lineages, who sit down to the ground of their knowing, hmm? um, and way of articulating their 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 faith is is such that it gives rise to a worshipful kind of love. Uh, they well, not all of them. Some are different, but they all let's say. He said, all the Sampradayas, all the Vaishnava Sampradayas, they all speak about the goal to be Mukti. Now they have different ideas about what Mukti is and so forth, whether it be Balabha or Nibarka on, on, on a higher end in relation to, to Braj or the Ramuja, Matva, by, by Kuntha realm, or up to Dwarka in the case of some of the Alwars in, in the Ramuja Sampradaya. Um, <laughs> but it's mukti. But the word that we use is what? What is our prayojan? Prem. Prem is the prayojan. So it's very much a Gaudiya term in the way it has been emphasized and used, and rightfully so, because what we find in Braj is not worship. And there is no distance between the object of worship and the worshiper. And that which and there's an absence of worship. It's certainly not, at least ostensibly, it certainly doesn't look like Yashoda Mahi is worshiping Krishna when she ties him up, hmm? chases him with a, with a stick. Hmm? When his friend Tridam wrestles him to the ground and, uh, and brings into question his strength, thinking himself to be stronger, and sometimes he's successful. He may wrestle Krishna to the ground and defeat him, pin him down. Of course, Krishna will say, I won, I won. And Sri Dhamma will say, what are you talking about? He said, my nose was up and your nose was down. Therefore, you lost. <laughs> so he never loses. That's not a problem. <laughs> but the point is that the, their, their interaction with the object of their love, is, has no uh, visible sense of worship hmm? that again as much as it takes us from this world and brings us in the presence of God it nonetheless keeps some distance between ourselves and, uh, and the worshipful deity so non-calculative devotion to use the term and by contrast calculative devotion would be the uh, love, if you will, in, 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 in awe and reverence. So in Braj, um, again, whenever I said this, you know, when you say this, I love you, then you don't understand. Um, what, what, what is love? <coughs> so, um, how did we get there? This is our, this is our ideal, right? This is Braj Bhakti. Mm -hmm. And, 
Brain is the priority. And there is a, a, a minus, is, is possessiveness, is uh, central, is the Zurub Lakshan, the primary characteristic of this um, type of uh, brain. Mm -hmm. So Sakibal, mm -hmm. yeah. Balaram, Krishna's two, Bhagavan Swayam. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have this kind of love, which is non-calculative, which is constitutes full <coughs> giving on our part, unconditional, again you have to have a center that can accept it. Narayan will accept worship under certain conditions. It has to be done like this, it can't be done like that. You have to face this way, it can only be done at this time, and so forth. Mahabhava says, Namna Hari Bhagavadani Sarvashadita Tarapita Niyamita Smalane and Bala. The method of my worship Nam Kirtan. It has no such regulations for time, place, or circumstance. Hmm? It's a different species, very peculiar, one that is hard to understand in Vaikuntha. What is that? How can they relate in, in that way? Hmm? Right? So this Krishna's two Bhagavan Swami is a very important uh, point. Uh, Krishna's claiming himself to be such, and he says those who understand this point, then they have in place one part of the equation that constitutes love in full measure. Raga Pava Samambita. Those who know this about me, who understand this point, hmm, they worship me, Buddha Bhava Samambita, which is what she much like to chant it, Raga Bhava Samambita, with non calculative uh, devotion, love. So, the Krishna is the, the, the family out there, the central point, right, of, of tattva for our um, uh, sampradaya. If we were to say, and we do, as I mentioned, Krishna's true Bhagavan Swayam, this is the central, in brief, uh, uh, one pada, one line, that tells us what is the tattva of Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Now we ask you, what is a, in a word, what is the bhava, word or two, what is the bhava of Gaudiya Vaishnavas? Hmm? I'll give you a hint. We have tattva and bhava. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to South India. So no? No. When he was in South India, he found a couple of books. He brought the books back to Puri. One book was the fifth chapter of the Brahma Samhita. And he said, in this book we find the Siddhanta, the Tattva of our, our group. Right? Because the book says Ganesha is like this, Shiva is like this, Durga is like this, Govinda Mari Purusham Tamam all in relation to his about his abode. Hmm? Sacred geography of the hexagon of the of Golok. Hmm? And then who are all the gods and all the goddesses in relation to Govinda. So it's a book that's saying Govinda Mari Purusham, Adi Purusham. It means Krishna's too, Bhagavan Swami, means the Adi Purusha, the original person, right? So, what was the other book he brought back? Somebody must know, I thought it would be you. Krishna Karnamrita. Krishna Karnamrita. And there we find the Bhava of the Sampradaya in the word of two, which is Jayadi. This is the, this is the Bhava and Krishna's too, Bhagavan Swami. Once I was talking to Chaitanya Goswami from the Radharamana Goswami many years ago. He was telling me how he was a young boy when Prabhupada came to Vrindavan 
and he met him. And, um, uh, and this was in the midst of his uh, having formed ISKCON and brought the devotees there and so forth. And so it was a big uh, event, uh, ongoing big event in, in, in Braj in those days. Uh, we were very colorful and stood out. Um, as much, you know, when I, these are days when you never, ever, the only car you ever saw in Vrindavan was the car they brought Prabhupada to the temple in from Delhi and they parked it. That was it. You never, ever saw a car. If you wanted to, you took the Radharani Express from, from, from uh, Calcutta, really, not deep to, 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 to Mathura. The only way to get to Vrindavan was, was by like horse and buggy or rickshaw. Mm -hmm. uh, so very different and Raman uh, was like a dangerous place in the forest. Mm -hmm. At any rate, uh, we Western people and whatnot brought, uh, it was quite a, quite a show you can imagine for the local. Local people. Um, but Chaitanya Swami, when he met Prabhupada during these early days, and he, and he, he told me, he said, I met Prabhupada, Prabhupada Ji, Swami Ji, and uh, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. But he said, it's like Gaudiya Vaishnavism coming through Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsvati Thakur, as I mentioned earlier, it looks a little different than the way it was presented uh, and had expressed itself even for centuries. When Bhakti Sanat Sarsatidaka first came to Braj, <laughs> he was accompanied by two of his disciples who he had given sannyas to, who were dressed like Catholic priests, you know, with the traditional dress of black and the collar and tilak and the shaved head and sika. <laughs> he was trying to figure out how are we going to send these? We got these English missionaries coming here trying to tell us how to worship God. We're going to send our missionaries over there. Hmm? And we're going to tell them. We, we, we've got some ideas too. So, so this was just trying to, as I said before, give some shape to the vision of Bhakti, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And he was able, he was standing, really, in, in experiential spiritual life to make adjustments to, to details like this. Sometimes there's a complaint that it'll, Bhakti Siddhanta, he instituted this sannyas. He took, he took sannyas from a picture, and then he, sannyas is not part of Gaudi Vaishnavism. Mm -hmm. And why is the right color of hear these things and so forth? And powerful arguments. Powerful arguments. <laughs> um, of course, he, he took sannyas from a picture of Gopi Shore, that's true, but he, he said that he received the the, san, the sannyas ate a dream from Kishore and then he formalized it, uh, so to speak, before the picture. Um, and Gubinda Basya of Bali Bhutibhusan makes it clear that, that, that there are instances in which mantras are passed on in dreams. In fact, we have a huge and foundational, if you will, example in Gaudi Sampradaya of this. What is that? In Briyat Bhagavatamrita, the protagonist of the second canto of Briyat Bhagavatamrita, um, the protagonist, is it, no, is that the, the, the student of Gopal Kumar, hmm? Jana Sharma, his story is there. He received the mantra, is it, was it Gopal mantra? Hmm? From Devi in a dream, and he was chanting it, and, and uh, it worked. <laughs> it took him to Gopal Kumar, his Siksha Guru, who he said, played out in the story there by Sanatana Prabhu, that was sent, was a, was a, was a Priyanarma Sakha in Braj, and was asked by Radharani, go pick up this fellow, this mature Brahman. He's in Braj, chanting Krishna's mantra, and I want you to bring him here. Hmm? And Sarup, which is his name, Golok, Gopakumar's name, Sarup said, and so that day I got the order for Radharani, but 
If I was to follow the order of Radharani, I wouldn't go to Gokavari with Krishna. But if I please Radharani, Krishna would be more pleased with me, so I was happily went, came here to you, and I'm sharing my story. You know the story. The point is, we receive this mother in a dream. Our whole Sampradaya is coming out of this book, in a sense, the great Bhagavatam So, something to be said for some dreams, not all dreams. <laughs> <laughs> if you dream about me and I tell you the right thing, then it's a real thing. <laughs> Anyone else says it as an imposter? <laughs> so, uh, then he, he uh, uh, established some type of a, um, where his desire was to establish some type of a sannyas order, and he did, uh, to an extent. And he, he, um, he dressed them in, the, in, in saffron cloth because he knew that the Ram Krishna mission was doing things like that. And in those days, when, when I first went to India, I landed in Madras and then I went to Calcutta and on to Navadweep in, I don't know, 1971 or 72. Um, for the first, it was the first festival for the, the Iskons festival in my probably the person invited me to come. I was in Australia at the time. When I, when I came to Calcutta, and Calcutta was an ocean of white cloth. Just an ocean of white cloth. If anyone's standing with a saffron, orange, red dough, they stand out, it's like, like, like a sore thumb, right? Hmm? Um, it's, things have changed. But uh, this is, uh, and this was, uh, what, 40 years? 30, 40 years, 30 years uh, after Bhaktisana and Sosri Thakur. So you can imagine the saffron cloth that stood out as a different time of Mahaprabhu, and he took it as a preaching strategy. Mahaprabhu accepted sannyas as a preaching strategy so that people would pay attention to him, but it would create a teaching moment, a teachable moment. They would see, oh, you just like, you see, oh, there's the policeman, slow down. He's got his uniform on and then slow down. So seeing the, the, the spiritual uniform, the, 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 the color that has traditionally been identified with, with those who, who give up the world, and, 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 um, the, 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 the Gyanis in, in, in the dominant uh, Advaita Vedanta sect and so forth. So he, 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 he reasoned like this, Bhakti Siddhanta, let's create a teach, teachable moment. And meanwhile, the, the, the renounced sector of Gaudiya Vaishnavism was, uh, in many respects, dubious. Hmm? Wearing white, renounced, like the, like the Vrindavan Goswamis, but doing parakya in the Sadhaka day. That's another good idea. Not in your practitioner's body. We won't do parakya. Run off with somebody else's wife. For practice. <laughs> you have to practice. <laughs> no. <laughs> we want to practice in such a way that you will get that kind of perfection. That you have to conduct yourself in your body and in your mind like the Goswamis of Vrindavan did. Sankhya Nama, Nama, Sankhya Nama. They chanted a regular number of rounds, they circumvented the Varada chants, so they lived like sadhus. So, yes, he, he so he, as far as I can talk, he, he, he made some innovations. Um, oh, Sanyas, very bad thing. Very bad against the rules of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. It is, it is, Hari Bhakti Vilas, Sanatana Swami, has said to him, wear white, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, he also gives the sannyas mantra here in Hari Bhakti Vilas, I think. We have to look it up. Mm -hmm. But Gaudiya Vaishnavism created. A renounced order. It's called Beg or Vesh or whatnot. Hmm? 
And well, some say Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself said that you know, there are, should be no sannyas in Kali Yuga. Finished. These re rebels, they want to go against Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's own body and claim to be uh, his followers. And Mahaprabhu himself said, no sannyas in Kali Yuga. And that's pretty strong pramana. Of course, he took sannyas in Kali Yuga. Hmm. Actions speak louder than words. And what were the words? Where did Mahaprabhu say no sannyas in Kali Yuga? You know? You know. Right? Conversation with Chandkazi. With Chandkazi. What was he talking to the Chandkazi about? He was talking to Chandkazi about the fact that in his religion, the Chandkazi was killing his mother, as Mahaprabhu put it, through the pen of Krishna's Kaviraj. Because the, the Muslims were killing cows, and cow is it is the mother. So the Chandkazi was learned, and he replied, well, in your Hindu religion, you also kill cows, because you have these uh, Vedic sacrifices, Ashvameda, Gomeda, hmm? sacrifices. So, and then Mahaprabhu quoted from the Purana, Ashvameda Gavala, Mbasa, Nyasa, Palapartakam, Devarena, Deva. Five things not to do in Kali Yuga. One of them is accepting sannyas, beginning a child in the womb of your wife's, your brother's wife, if your brother was incapable of doing that for biological reasons, that is forbidden. Uh, uh, and animal sacrifice, the Vedic animal sacrifice is forbidden in Kali Yuga, these things. Mm -hmm. So the context was that he's quoting a verse, the purport that he is emphasizing in quoting the purport is that no, we don't do animal sacrifices in Kali Yuga. Hmm? He wasn't saying, don't take sannyas, Chanakazi, in Kali Yuga. He was saying, don't eat meat. Hmm? This just happened to be part of the verse. And then we look at what he did by his actions, and actions, as I say, they speak louder than words. And what, what is the Purana speaking about? We should look at the section. What is it? Brihadnardiya Purana or something like that. Hmm? It's probably a section about... <coughs> what is this section about? Um, Kali Varcha. Hmm? Kali Varcha. Kali Yuga. Ka Kali Varcha. Yeah. It's forbidden in Kali. Hmm? Uh, different actions forbidden in Kali. In Kali Yuga, yeah. But relative to the uh, Dharma mark, Karma mark, Varnashram, hmm? this is what it's relative to. You know, it's said, Shruti Smriti Purana Adhi Panchala Jiki Binibina Aikanti Yodaya Bhakti Rupa Jai What about that? If you don't follow the Shruti, the Smriti, the Puranas, etc., then your bhakti is just a disturbance to the society. Therefore, you better follow the Mama Samhita, right? Very carefully. Otherwise, your bhakti will be disturbed. But no, this is a misunderstanding of the verse. <laughs> the verse is saying, with the implication of the verse is, relative to your path, because within the Shruti, the Smriti, Puran, Adi, etc., you're going to find Varnashram mark, the Karma mark, you're going to find the Gyan mark, you're going to find maybe Yoga mark, a little different, um, and you're going to find Bhakti mark. So relative to the path, the mark that you're on, then you have to follow the Shruti and the Smriti the Purana in relation to that path. It doesn't mean that Bhaktas in, in the school of Uttam Bhakti have to follow the uh, directives of the Karma mark, otherwise their Bhakti will be affected. Indeed, that would be Karma, that is Bhakti that is covered by Karma. Hmm? which goes against the very definition of bhakti given by Rupa Goswami. Jnana karmadi anahuritam. 
Like you have some, some devotees today, they think it's very important that, well, it's clear, they say. Women can't be gurus. That's obvious. Because women can't wear the sacred thread. And if you don't give the sacred, how can you give initiation without the sacred thread? It's real easy. And it was done for centuries and centuries. Indeed, for centuries, the Brahman thread was taken off by those who had it by the time, at the time of receiving Vaishnava Diksha by way of saying, now I'm entering into a different path. That, as I say, this, it dances on the head of Varnashram. Hmm? So, this is an example, this kind of idea is an example of ar arguably bhakti that is covered by karma. Hmm? It's not uttam, it's not an uttam bhakti conception. And of course, we have many beautiful uh, gurus amongst the women class in our own midst uh, to be, to be, <laughs> a work in progress. History of the men, women, gurus, of course, in Gaudiya Sampradaya. So, Bhakti Siddhan Sarasadak, yeah, he, so he created a sannyasa order. But my point is also, there is also, there's already a renounced order in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, and what the text is talking about from the Prana is that there's a certain hardship involved with sannyas, that for Kali Yuga people will not be possible to endure, and the classical sannyas from the Puranic sensibilities involves things like wearing tree bark for your clothes and uh, and such. So these kind of hardships are not possible for Kali Yuga people. This is basically the point. It's not a statement that is in essence against the principle of giving up and renouncing the material attachment. That's 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 101. The ABCs of spiritual life. I mean, you're in the karma mark, and if you want to move from the karma mark or the religious path to a spiritual path, the simple step is nishkam karma. What, do you, what makes the difference between the religious path and the spiritual path? Factoring in renunciation of the fruits, the one's action. From poverty to nivrity to path of acquisition, to the idea that less, less is more. Even the Buddha said, or some follower. <laughs> That's good one. Less is more. Mm -hmm. So the Purana, the, the Purana is not mandating uh, in Kali Yuga against a core um, uh, kind of baseline, foundational point that of uh, Ground, groundwork, uh, the ground on which, out of which spirituality arises. I mean, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his Sampradaya, there is a metaphorical tree that Krishna Skavirash Goswami speaks of, uh, that was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, and another, and then they had two branches of Vedas and Dinanda, two of the trunks split into two, and then many, many branches, the fruits and flowers of praying, and so on and so forth, and the roots of that metaphorical tree were the nine sannyasis, Keshava, Keshava Bharati, Brahmananda Bharati, Brahmananda Puri, hmm, and so forth. Hmm. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a sannyasi. And Sanatana Prabhu established some type of renounced order. And they had to undergo the same hardship as anybody else. I mean, the Goswamis themselves certainly uh, set an extraordinary standard of of, of, of renunciation. Hmm? So it's such a minor point hmm? um, that uh, it's such a detail, hmm? and to make a detail into a principle hmm? that is a real big problem. That is the real problem. And if you combine the results of such a preaching strategy, which will be mixed, admittedly, any preaching strategy will probably have some mixed results. There will be good, and there will be some downside. 
every preaching strategy that you may hatch out of compassionate heart uh, has a shelf life. Time and circumstance change. And so a strategy for a certain time and circumstance will not be applicable in another time and circumstance. And then if it's accepted as a principle, mistakenly, and then try to employ it in a different time and circumstance, you will have an object, a, 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 a detrimental results, and so forth. And uh, so it's important to be able to sort these things out. That requires some insights and realization. What are principles? What are details? So Sarasati Thakur, I mean, he had good results. We're all here, uh, our Shraddha, the Shraddha in Bhakti, the entire international community of Gaudiya Vaishnavas is coming out of our particular party bar that Sarasati Thakur would like to refer to as the Bhakti you know, party bar. It's the one party bar that, that prints and sells books everywhere. And so if you're a member of the Gaudiya, of the, as I said before, the Bhakti you know, party bar, and then you leave, which some people do for good reasons, because it was misrepresented and so forth, they go somewhere else, to this Baba or that Baba or this Maharaj or that, whatever. Then they get there and they talk and then they want to print books. One, the other, he goes, what are you talking about? Oh, distribute books, you want to take me to New York? What are you talking about? We don't do that. That's the Bhakti Vinod people. <laughs> Maybe you want to go back to them. So it's rather uh, a unique uh, feature of our party bar, this kind of uh, dynamic uh, preaching hmm? that um, that has a, at its core the ability to adjust details in order to bring about the desired result. And it doesn't mean to say that the, that adjustment of details is something that for all time and circumstances it has to be within the, within the party bar itself, then sometimes be stopped and turned off and Rethought and, and so on and so forth. So he did this. Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasthak. I'm not sure how we got to him, but he, he he's an important person. So, <laughs> so uh, um, uh, uh, he came to Vrindavan. Yeah, I said with the, with the monks. Yeah. So he adjusted uh, uh, the uh, the details mm. and. What was the point? Um, we were talking about Krishna's two, Bhagavan, Svaya. Bhagavan is why he is not in charge of Priyanda or something. Yeah, that's the beginning we're all here to get back there. We're going to have another limb here. We're talking about Jaya Adhan as a half. Oh, the Bhav and the Siddhanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see that one right there. So the Bhav is the Siddhanta in one book, the Bhav in another, Jayarati. This is the basic central idea. Still, we need another point. <laughs> another link. Another link there. Anyway, maybe it'll come to me. I'll come back to it. But Jayarati. So, uh, so, um, yeah, so, this is the point. So, when Chaitanya Goswami mm -hmm. said that he met Swamiji Prabhupada when he was a young lad in Vrindavan and he wasn't sure about it because they were different. That was my point. There was Prabhupada as a sannyasi and he had these Western disciples and they were looking a little different than the traditional expression of Gaudiya Vaishnavism that he was familiar with and, and, and was uh, uh, part of the local uh, scene of Vrindavan, uh, so he, he had some doubt. Are they, are they Gaudiyas or what? So he said, I asked Swamiji, I said, Swamiji, what, uh, how, how, do you, how, do we please, how can we please Krishna? He said, how can we please Krishna? And then Chaitanya Goswami said, and Swamiji said, oh, you have to please Radharani. He said, then I knew he was born. <laughs> yes. He's a good idea. Looks a little different. Got it. <laughs> Indeed, he certainly did. Uh, on his voyage across the, the ocean, you know, he wrote the famous poem. We, we cited some of it yesterday. But there are reasons. What is the refrain? 
This is his point. He reasoned with, uh, with Krishna. Oh, my friend Krishna, this is my thought, he said. That if Radharani is pleased with you, then your life will be successful. If you can get Radharani's favor, then, then, then your life will be uh, perfect. And he said, Drugati Bhutam. This is this is fixed like the pole star. This is this is what your the 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 orbit of your life in terms of its perfection moves around this. The extent to which Radharani is pleased with you, then your life has meaning and value. This is what he said to Krishna in his prayer. My dear friend, he said, Baha'i, oh brother, I, a bit of advice. <laughs> That's how I'm thinking. If Radharani is pleased with you, then your life will be successful. Krishna said, what? I'm thinking like that. Sounds like one of my close friends who talked to me. Hmm? Um, yes, and then he said, and my Buddha Dave is Nayanamani Manjari. Hmm? She is a servant and a maiden of Radha, Bhakti Siddhanta, the great Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, in the Sadaka Day. He asked me to come to the West and preach Gauravani, Gauravani Prachari, the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I'm thinking that if you give me the power to fulfill the desire of Radha's Manjari, that Radharani will be pleased with you and your life will be successful. <laughs> this was his prayer. And I think that uh, Krishna gave him some power. <laughs> he said, you want power? That, take it. What will I give you? I'll give you Balaram's power. Nityanandavesh. I'll send all his power within you. Then you'll be successful. Like I said the other day, when he returned from America, she didn't march with him like, something happened to you. It's got in you. <laughs> You're different. <laughs> and he was a spiritual scientist. He detected what well, it's denominations. His power is coming in. And he was doing the work like Nityananda, begging people, chanting be happy, mm -hmm. and going to the foreign, uh, fallen people, simple people. So many examples he gave and so forth. So, anyway, we have the Tattva, Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam, we have the Bhava, Jairaja. But Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam is where we began, and the point being this that Krishna is the source of all manifestations of divinity. And these different manifestations of divinity constitute different emotional waves within the, within the ocean of, of Krishna's emotional reality. So when the wave of Sakya comes, friendliness, it's Balaram. So Balaram is Krishna. Right? He's one with Krishna. This is a, an important point of Tattva. Krishna and Balaram are one. At the same time, he's different in in Bhavavish Bede, in terms of Bhava, and also in terms of uh, the color of his complexion. These are the two things. Citing Lata Bhagavatamrita, Rupa Goswami, and Krishna is taken from that in his Chaitanya Charitamrita and represented the argument there. All the di where, wearing all the different types of manifestations and avatars of Bhagavan Sri Krishna are, are mentioned. Mm -hmm. So this is very technical and, and uh, kind of complicated. Uh, but in Braj there are two types. So we have um, Prabhav Prakash and Bhavav Prakash. Prabhav Prakash means that uh, Krishna manifests in a form that's exactly the same as his Swayamrupa. Hmm? And, 
an example is that when, when Krishna went for the uh, picnic lunch along the bank of the Jamuna, connected hmm, with the Agasura Leela, the Brahma Vimohan Leela, that when they sat down and packed the lunch, then he manifested himself next to every coward boy. Each coward boy thought, Krishna sitting next to me. And each one was right. Hmm? In Madhuriya Rasa, we have the same example, right? In Rasa Lila, Krishna manifested himself next to each gopi. Each gopi thought Krishna stands in with me. Each one was right. Hmm? Only Radha complained. <laughs> <laughs> Just to teach us. That's about her position. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. We might figure out the who, who, who's who of Raj. <laughs> so there are instances like this. How many, how many, how many um, uh, Prabhav Prakashas, Prakashas are there of Krishna in Vrindavan? As many as there are devotees mm -hmm. in circumstances where such is required, like this. Sakirak Rasa instance I described with this Madhuri Rasa instance in Rasa Lila. So he has unlimited. Now, the other type is Vaibhav Prakash, where the Prakash, the manifestation of himself, is different. And the difference is in, in emotion, in bhava, and that will have a corresponding difference in, in complexion. Hmm? Otherwise, it said Balaram and Krishna are the, are the same. So, how many Vaibhavakashas are there in, 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 in Bhartava? Only one. That's Balaram. Hmm? Only one. Vaibhavakash. Uh, Krishna's complexion is like Sham, indigo. Hmm? It is the color of romantic love. Every color has corresponds with emotion. It's like you know, warm colors, and cold colors, and so forth, and spiritual colors, and whatnot. So, in the Indian aesthetics, of course, then you know, all the emotions have corresponding colors. Rupa Goswami is drawn from there and to some extent, and innovated as well to describe bhakti rasa, and so. When he goes through the different rasas, he also assigns that the colors that correspond with them as taken from from any of the principal secular books on, on, uh, on rasa, like Bard's books or the other Vishwanath, you know, uh, and so on. And so, so that anyway, the color sometimes people ask, why is Christian blue? And, this is the answer. This is the color of charm. Is the color of romantic love. And uh, by contrast, Balram's color is pandur, pandur, white, like Maharaj pandur, <laughs> white color, hmm? white. But Rupa Goswami describes like a crystal. Or in other places, he's been described as white, like like the moon. So this is a special kind of white because each of these examples from the natural world, the moon and the crystal, say something more to us than white. They also have a uh, speak to us about reflection, right? They're re they're reflective, really. The moon's light, for example, derives from the sun reflected on the surface of the moon. It is, the moon is able to reflect the light of the sun and show it in another way. Hmm? In a way that's much more pleasing to look at than the sun itself. Hmm? Right? Much more soothing. And that, that unlike the sun, which is gone, lights the night hmm? when we can't see. Hmm? Just enough to make your way. Uh, to the rendezvous. Mm -hmm. Just enough. And to excite the night also. To excite the night. So, reflective light. Balaram is, uh, is described like this. Uh, that means that 
the light of his life is Krishna, and he's reflecting that. Hmm? He's he is Bhagawan reflecting in in the mood of a servant of Sevaka Bhagawan, hmm? reflecting back on the Savior Bhagawan, he who is saved. So if you look at Balaram, you see Krishna. Because that's what he's all about. He's all about serving, representing in, in certain instances and so forth. And believe we'll maybe get to some of them. Um, Krishna. Hmm? So he, yes, he is Bhagwan. So he is an object of love. He is uh, someone in whom we can repose. Uh, Sakya Bhava and his friends do, but uh, along with Krishna. We could say they go together, Krishna and Balaram, as the object of love uh, uh, in general at Sakyarasa. Um, but Rupa Goswami has more emphasized the, the bhava of Balaram as a bhakta mm -hmm. in Sakyarasa. Then he has emphasized his position as, as Balaram. So he, what he's doing is emphasizing, by doing that, emphasizing how Balaram is. is Deity and more so example of devotion. Mm -hmm. Example of devotion. It's almost like he's like the, like the Shakti Tattva next to the Shakti Man that is Krishna in the combined form of Krishna and Bhagavan. The Shakti is the, is the vessel of love mm -hmm. and Bhagavan is the object of love. Yes, he's also an object of love for Sakyasa, but but mm, his primary focus is on his is serving Krishna in Sakyabhav and that also relative to the mixture of his Sakyabhav with Dasya and Vatsalya. So he he presides over the entirety of Sammanaduga Bhakti means Vatsalya, Dasya and Sakya. And so within his constitution we find, if you will, the motive constitution we find, Sakyabhav, mixed with Vatsalya, a tinge of, a pinch of Vatsalya and a pinch of Dasya. Um, but this is Sakyabhav Sankul. It is Sakyabhav with these mixtures. So Sakyabhav is predominating. With regard to this mixture, what we find in this mixture is a bringing together of incompatible rasas. Sakyabhav has this capacity here because Vatsalyabhav is, 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 is not compatible with Madhuryabhav. Rupa Goswami says, not a drop. You can understand it. If your parents or elders teachers, and so forth, want to have a romantic relationship with you, that's the problem. You understand? Romantic love and parental love, but we always share the teacher's love, they don't go together. So if you see that, then you have to back off. They don't go together. But it's possible that with parental love can come some friendship, especially as your kids get older. Hmm? Um, and with regard to service, also, service and Vatsalya, uh, they don't go together either, but, they can, but it can be mixed with Sakya. So there can be an older brother hmm, who has a well-wishing for the younger brother in Sakya Rasa, and there can be a younger brother who is, has a bit of a servile attitude in his context of his friendship to his older brother. So Sakyarasa brings these uh, uh, together in, 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 in a beautiful way, and then Prasanna Vaidya Balra presides over the entirety of Sakya Vatsalya and um, Dasya Bhav of Braj. The Dasya Bhav of Braj, of course, is predominantly almost 99% of it is tinged with a little bit of Sakya. So you have Sakya tinged with Dasya and Dasya tinged with Sakya, the opposite. That's why it's a whole bhakyam, a whole bhakyam, 
Nanda Gopa Vajoka Shantiyam Mitram Paramahanda Puna Brahma Brahma said, and he said it with some emphasis, after having glorified Vatsalya Rasa, seeing the mothers, fathers, and cows caring for their, their boys and the calves in a way that, that was uh, extreme. Hmm? And I think Marsh talked about it yesterday, and he realized, Balram realized, oh, there's some spe something special going on here, right? Hmm? As in Brahma Bhimo and Leela. Eternal 
Jiva Goswami ties the word to mitram, the eternal friends. So he says there's a real, there's a reality, like, you know, um, what is the theologian? C.S. Lewis, was the, the Christian theologian, wrote a book about love, and he had, I think, four cardinal types of love. One of the types is friendship. It's an interesting book. But he's talking about it in the world. Is there an eternal friendship? This we come to and go to watch them. So Rupa Goswami is establishing there's there's something called eternal friendship. Here it says right here in the bottom. <laughs> their their mitram, their friendship is sanatana, and it's in relation to Purna Brahma. Hmm? You can't be friends with Brahma. You can love to be in Brahman, but you can't. You, you, you can't. You can love to exist in Brahman, but you can't exist to love. If you want to exist to love, you got to go somewhere else. You have to go to the, the port of Brahman. And that is in and Krishna. And it means also what is being said in this verse is this, 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 this sakya, it pervades all of uh, the brudge, it touches every corner of brudge. When Krishikesh Ananda, disciple of Prabhupada, so spent time with Bon Maharaj, Bhakti Hridai Bon Maharaj, and other uh, sannyasins in the Bodhi um, again had Prabhupada's company. Um, and he, he asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, is everyone, all the acharyas and Gaudi Vaishnava, are they all in the Manjari Bhav? And Prabhupada said, down to Sakya. <laughs> Next question. Like that. Down to Sakya. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> just one instance, but many, which is, we gave those kind of curious responses. So, uh, it, it means that this, yes, the, 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 the main show of, Br of Braj is the Paragiva. That is the central thing. But there, there are supporting characters and roles that make it all possible. Mm -hmm. And in a broader sense, this Sakyabhava extends everywhere. For example, I'll give you an example. It, we, we, we see Sakyaras mixes with Dasyaras. Sakyaras mixes with Patsalgaras. And, relative to Kapataru's question, Sakyaras can be influenced and in that sense mix, and Jiva Goswami uses the term, Makes Rupa Goswami uses it as well, Mishra, with uh, Madhurya. Now, it's a different kind of mixing. The mixing of Vatsali and Sakya and Dasya and Sakya, that is one thing. That is called Sankhu Bhav. So the Bhav is mixed. But the Bhav of the Priyanarma Sakas, these are the friends of Krishna who are involved in his romantic life in ways that Balaram is not overtly involved. And uh, they are influenced by Madhurya but they are not in simple love. Their path is purely Sakya, but it's a, it, it's a Sakya that's, that's augmented by Madhurya Rasa for the sake of being a friend in extraordinary circumstances, in all, let's say, in all circumstances. So Krishna has a romantic life, hmm? and some of his friends want to be with him to assist him in his romantic life. Hmm? In order to, to do that, they have to know something about it. Hmm? So they have some desire for Madhurya Rasa. They have desire for Madhurya Rasa. But they're in Sakya Rasa. Now, according to the science of Rasa, given by Jiva if you are in a particular Rasa and you have a desire for, or you've been attracted, sounds peculiar, but to another Rasa that's compatible, then that 
other rasa, mukya rasa, one of the, uh, the principal rasas, serves as an udipana, udipana to, to stimulate and uh, the, the sakya rasa and take it to new heights and allow it to involve it to be um, involved in this case in then the romantic leelas of Krishna. They want to know if you want to help Krishna and then you want to help Radha also, they are also, they have group, they, the Priyanamas have a male group leader and they have female group leader on both sides. So the female group leader, the purpose is that they, through that connection, they may develop the kind of sympathy and empathy that's required to give the kind of uh, advice that lovers may need. There's no one in Braj who is more expert in uniting Radha and Krishna during their man, their disputes, than Subhavasak. We said, by the way, that when Krishna feels a wave of Sakyabhava, Balaram is manifest. And Raghunathas Goswami has shown us that in his writing. When Radharani feels a wave of Sakyabhava, that is Subhavasak. So this is pure sakirasa. We could say, let's say, maybe influenced is a better word than mixed, hmm? influenced, augmented, such that it reaches new heights of intimacy and excellence that extend beyond that of atsalirasa. Hmm? And almost on a par, in this case, with the Priyamarinamas, with that of uh, Radharani's attendance, enters into Mahabhav, Ruda Mahabhav. Mandaris could go a little in the Mahabhav further than that, but this is unknown practically for most devotees, perhaps. But even the Mahan, Jiva Goswami says in in Bhakti in in Priti Sandarbha, even the Gopas, some Gopas experience Mahan. This can only refer to the part to the to the Priyanarmasakas who are involved in the mind the, the disputes of Radha and Krishna and her, have to understand them, their feelings, so to speak, in order to be empathetic enough to say the right thing to um, bring about the desired result. Hmm? So they're very peculiar and very necessary for this uh, intimate union of Radha and Krishna to take place. Hmm? Now this is a type of sakharasa, and I'm just bringing up as an example now just to make the point that the sakharasa spread throughout the It touches all the other sentiments mm -hmm. in ways that none of the other sentiments can. It's also a sentiment in which, which is one of the specialties, in which the love of the, of the coward and the love of Krishna, the love of the coward for Krishna and the love of the, the Krishna for the coward is the same. There's a sameness to it. Hmm? You can see the love of the parent for the child is different than the child's love for the parent, right? And the servant and the master. And loved and beloved, it could be similar, but it's also different. Hmm? The love of the man for the woman, the woman for the man, there's a slightly different perspectives. But the point in Sakharas, which this, this, we talked about this like to emphasize it, it's sameness. We, we just completely want with Krishna. <laughs> this is their oneness. Oneness. How he's feeling, how we feel about him, he feels exactly the same about us. Hmm? We're the same. <laughs> very, this is a very prominent uh, aspect. That and Vishwamma, the confidence. The confidence, it, it, it breeds confidence in the love. Madhurya Rasa sometimes, some, in some ways, lacks some confidence that leads to Mom. He loves me, he loves me now. If he loved me, why is he worth it to turn the volley? I don't love him. Hmm? So, uh, so if, if it is expressed, experienced at all in, in, in Sakyarasa, then only you know, indirect way by identifying the mom, the, 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 the divine couple, in, in such a way that they can uh, uh, tender to 
to, uh, to Krishna, for example, and, and to Radha. In such times of need, now all around we can't do that. But he can't, the reason he can't do that is he can't do that and be the older brother at the same time. Hmm? That Vatsalya thing it was, would be problematic for that. He can't, he can't be directly involved. Hmm? Um, and, um, and be the older brother. But he is, and he is the older brother. So, um, but that does not mean that he is Not the, not the presiding deity in one sense over the over the over the but uh, the, or that he's not involved in Madhurya Rasa. He's involved in Braj by getting out of the way, and he is the Maria Purusha of Krishna. So he's watching out due to his Vatsalya, uh, uh, overseeing the behavior of Krishna mm -hmm. and taking care of him at the behest of of Yashoda. Mm -hmm. He's the older brother. He's only a week, but <laughs> week older. He's watching over him, right? Making sure he does the right thing. If he eats dirt, Balaram tells Mother Yashoda. And Krishna says, How could you tell her? What ordeal you put me through? I had to open my mouth. And, everything. and she fainted. Look what you did to Mom. How could you do that to me? What kind of friend are you? Hmm? Mother Yashoda told me, you know, I have to take care of uh, But, so he reports on Krishna. <laughs> but he doesn't report on one thing about Krishna. If he's looking out for the behavior and the good character of Krishna, don't you think he'll report about his Radha goes with Radha? You don't think he knows anything about that? Well, he knows everything about that. But he doesn't report it. Hmm? That's what, and, and because, Balaram never said anything about it because it's not happening. Because Balaram always tells the truth. He re he's not saying the rumors are there. Hmm? Must not be true. Balaram's not supporting. Hmm? So he keeps himself quiet about that. Hmm? So this is how it expresses itself, hmm? in one sense, in the brush leader. Now, outside of the brush leader, of course, it's a different thing. Outside of the Brach Lila, let's say, in, with all the other avatars, like I said the other day, Balaram's also present, right? He's going there as Sesh, he's with Krishna. Three's a crowd, he said, but none in this case. There can be Krishna and Balaram and Lakshmi, no problem. Lakshmi, of course, Balaram's there in kind of a, you know, a diminutive sense, well, in a supportive sense. He's the bad set, the, the bad, uh, the shoes, the umbrella, the Brahman thread, everything. All these, uh, all the paraphernalia and so forth. He's very much there. I mean, and he's the bed. <laughs> so he's pretty per much present. Hmm? But in the Brahma Lila, then it, it's more covert. Hmm? That's the nature of the Brahma Lila. More covert, he's involved. But he's involved. And the fact that he's involved also comes out very powerfully in Gaur Lila. Because as we read this morning, there's no one who. who did more to focus and light on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the prospect that, in, the, uh, in connection with him, the, the, his dispensation, the opportunity for Gopi Bhav coming through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, no one shed more light on that than the Dhananda Prabhu. Hmm? So we read a little bit about it, but there's much more to be said. Hmm? And without any books being written, any discs came out. And, Said, pointing to him. And, uh, we, 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 I think in the, when we are this morning, we quoted Vrindavan Das Thakur that Gopi Baba has been given to the world by the Dhananda Prabhu. He's through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is shedding light on who, in other words, this is the Dhananda Prabhu, who's Balaram and Gorilla. If he says something, the people took it seriously. He was an extraordinary person. So when Balaram said, when the Dhananda said, listen, worship Gauranga, chant the name of Goranga, give the teachings of Goranga, and if you do that, I will be purchased by you. People began saying, Gor, Gor, we want to be purchased by him. He's a very, very special person, a very extraordinary person. If he speaks for us, if he gives us shelter, then no one can hurt us. This is the feeling. If we have his shelter, then nothing can harm us. And he uplifted the entirety of Bengal, all Sakagram, 
and empowered his Calvary friends, the Dutch of Paul, for extraordinary, extraordinary material and spiritual welfare. Hmm? What is his name? Prabhupada's the patron saint of Prabhupada's family, Udharanandata, Udharanandata, one of the Dwarasa Gopals. He was named Udharanandata. Excuse me, Banitinanda Prabhu himself. Udharanandata. He, Mahaprabhu, of course, commissioned Itinanda to deliver Bengal. And that's what he did. <laughs> And uh, the whole Subarna Barna community that the proper was, was a later the member of was all delivered from their social plight hmm? um, by by Udara Dutta and Dinanapuru and their nominal participation in Gaudi Vaishnavism became substantial participation in Gaudi Vaishnavism by itself. Just to give you an example of his magnanimity, it said that he he built ten acres of land in size. I mean, eight, it's an American term. I don't know if it's a British term, but uh, it's, a, it's a big piece of land. <laughs> ten of them. Mm -hmm. uh, ten acres worth of kitchens to feed Bengal. And then he had another forest that he that he turned into housing for people. So. He was a, he had he was so busy, and in the context of that, of course, he's giving Krishna nam and doing nam nam sankirtan. That he had like he's compared to Raghunath Bhatt, like Raghunath Bhatt to Goswami. He had no time to write anything. Goswamis are famous for their books, right? Raghunath Bhatt to Goswami has didn't write anything. You know what he did? He was the cook for Radha and in his mind. He was cooking so many things that they couldn't supply the ideas that he had to offer to the Radha Govinda. Keeping people busy trying to supply the ingredients. And of course, what they couldn't supply through Manas and Puja would be supplied and then, be, then it would be available as prasadam. Where did that come from? It came from the mind of God. He had no time to write and to cook. Hmm? And if you ever read Lila Grantas of the Goswami, especially Gubindali <laughs> Lamrita uh, or um, what's uh, Vishnu's book, uh, Krishna Bhagavan Amrita, it's like, is there any time when Krishna's not eating? Well, they so that he can't. But the time he gets up, the time he goes out, he's eaten like six times already. <laughs> <laughs> and they're sending picnic lunch out and it's just feast when they come home and a snack at night. And so, Raghavadas was with Raghavadas, but he was not very busy with that kind of work. We don't know that the magnanimity of, of these uh, uh, associates of Nityananda and the extent to which, as I say, Nityananda Prabhu put focus on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and what he came to offer is uh, unparalleled. And so, this is another instant, instance in which we find Balaram involved in a particular way in the Madhuri Arasa Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now there are many people who, who, who want to bring him in more directly. Hmm? More directly. Um, we should talk about that. Hmm? So there's a whole... You, you just, let's look at... We should look now at the romantic life of Balaram. What is the romantic life of all of That will take some time. What is the time now? 10 to 12. 10 to 12. So we have to we'll postpone that. Okay? Stay tuned. <laughs> we'll get to that. What is the romantic life of all of And uh, how does it play out? She, Bhavadi, he died. 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 He died